drumsticks are a very personal item for drummers, and the more experience you get on the drums, like the longer you play, your needs will actually evolve with your experience. So when you first start playing out, you know, you're, well, whatever, 12, 13 years old, walk into a music store, pick up a pair of sticks, you're most likely going to be fine with that pair over the next whatever, like year or two. But like I said, the more experience you get on the drums, your technique starts to evolve um, and get better, then your list of requirements for a stick start to get a little more specific according to how you play. Um, you start paying a little bit more attention to the tip size on the stick or the, the length of the taper, the, um, the overall diameter, like all kinds of stuff that you never really used to care about when you first started playing. All of a sudden, you're going to start paying a little more attention to that kind of detail. I've played countless makes and models and sizes of sticks since I started playing. And I've kind of, I'm sort of in an area now where I, I pretty much know what I like. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a peek into my stick bag, show you what I'm using these days and why. And then afterwards, you know, maybe give you beginner drummers a little bit of uh, advice and some tips on shopping for sticks. One question that I get asked quite often in emails is, what kind of sticks do you use? And for me, man, it's just like, it's no different than asking somebody, what kind of shoes do you wear? You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a totally personal preference, completely irrelevant to your situation. So, I mean, what I use really shouldn't affect what you decide to, um, to choose for sticks. But I can tell you this. It never really made much sense to me for a session drummer or, or one that at least plays with a bunch of different people to stick with one particular size of stick. For me, that would be like, you know, looking in a mechanic's toolbox and seeing 17 of the same size wrench. A drumstick bag for me is like a toolbox. And sometimes you're gonna need a hammer, sometimes you're gonna need needle nose pliers. I play in a lot of different types of uh, situations. And sometimes the one stick that's appropriate for this one won't necessarily be appropriate for this one. So for that reason, I carry a, a selection of sizes in my bag. I have a preferred size um, that I would consider my, you know, my, uh, my normal go-to size. But I'm also comfortable playing a few other different sizes. And again, depending on what it is that I'm doing, my stick's gonna change. So let me invite you into my stick bag. Take a look inside of this thing and show you what I got in there. All right, so I'll just start with my, uh, my regular go-to pair of sticks. Um, recently, I've been checking out these Keith Carlock signature sticks. And um, what I was saying before about, you know, how your technique evolves and things start to change and, you know, you start to narrow down that list of requirements. This stick I was digging because it's, um, this, it's, it's a very specific diameter. It's slightly less than a 5A, which I love. And um, the thing I like about it is that the style of the stick really just kind of complements how I play with a thin taper on the top. The, um, the tip size is actually pretty small, but I do a lot of dancing and stuff, you know, on hi-hats and um, all that other kind of thing. So the bounce is really cool with these. The diameter is perfect for my hands, anyway. And the thing that I really like about this uh, super thin taper is that when I'm doing stuff way back on the snare, like accents, rim shot accents and stuff. I found that the thin taper is very cool for that kind of thing. So, yeah, so I just tried out two or three pairs of these to see how I like them. This is just a recent thing. Um, and the only thing that I was weary about was the size of that tip on the end. 
because I was always nervous about these things because they're so small. I just sort of had a vision of them just shredding right down to super thin pencil size. And to be honest, you know, it, it does kind of shred a little bit up there. But I love everything else about the stick so much that I don't really care too much about it. Um, the, uh, the stick definition is pretty sensitive with these, and I kind of like that. So, Carlock signatures, those are kind of my go-to regular one. Whenever I do videos here, and, um, and I'm out gigging with other people, Carlock signatures. 5A barrel. Um, these are what I use in church. I like the 5A barrels for um, church because they're a little bit, they're, uh, they're a little less sensitive up here by the taper and the, and the tip of the stick. And because I'm doing a lot more sort of uh, aggressive playing with the, with the style of stuff that we play in church, I shy away from using the, the, the Carlock signatures. I save those for gigs because um, I don't want to play too aggressively with the Carlock sticks just because of that short, thin taper on the top. These are a little bit stronger for me, and they're roughly the same diameter. Um, and I've had these first, right? So I just kind of use the 5A barrels particularly in, um, in church, and they just work for me. I was always a fan also of the barrel, the barrel shape tip. So, um, so when Vic came out with the barrel, 5A and 5B barrel, I just kind of jumped all over. I also keep a pair of HD4s, Vic Firth HD4s. These are around the diameter of a 7A. As a matter of fact, I think they're slightly less um, than a 7A as far as diameter. Whenever I do jazz, bebop, any kind of surgical swing type stuff, um, I go with a really thin stick. So the HD4s, um, they're kind of, if you compare the two, the HD4s are exact sort of replica except thinner than the 5A barrel. So they're the two sticks side by side look identical. Just one's a little bit thinner um, than the other one. So yeah, so I keep, a, I keep a pair of HD4s in there just for the swing and the bebop stuff. So I have about um, two or three pairs of the 5A barrels, two pairs of the Carlock sticks, a pair of HD4s, um, and I have these. Let me show you these, man. Like, these are really cool. I don't know if you can find these anymore. These were made several years ago, actually by Regal Tip. Regal Tip made these things. I can't even remember what they called them. But uh, there's sort of a cross between a stick and a brush. But the brush is, is way up here. Instead of fanning out from the middle like that, the brush is up here. So they sound exactly like brushes, you know, when you're swishing around and, and doing all of that kind of stuff. But you can be a little, more, a little more aggressive with these as far as backbeats and stuff. Your backbeats are a lot stronger with these guys. Um, I've had these for, I don't even know how long, man. Um, I've had these for a while. And I'm hanging on to them because they don't make these anymore. And I wouldn't even know where to replace them um, if they got damaged. So I just kind of wrap the ends with Vic Firth tape just to make them a little bit thicker. But these are like my go-to, man. Like I love using these. I've recorded with these. I play live with these. And they really sound very cool. I also have a pair of these. I think every drummer should have some sort of dowel stick or any kind of, um, any kind of rod type stick in their bag because it's just, they're just super handy when you need them. So for situations where I need volume but not as much volume as you get with a stick, I use these. So these are the new slats. Talawans by Vic Firth. Steve Smith, of course, um, endorses these things. And like I said, they're just situations where 
these are really ideal because you can get away with doing stuff with these that you can't really do with regular sticks. So um, for that reason, I keep these around. And they're also really cool for soloing, like if you're soloing snares off kind of thing, these rod sticks are very cool. So that's pretty much what I got in my bag. That's, this is what I walk around with. I remember there was a time, man, when I was like in my mid 20s or whatever, I used to walk around with this friggin' grocery bag size stick bag. I had like 30 pairs of sticks in the thing. And eventually I was just like, why? Like how many pairs of sticks do you plan to break on a gig? You know what I mean? I keep my bag nice and thin. Just keep a couple of pairs in there, a little bit of a selection. And that's what I use. In the house, I also have a few pairs of 5B barrels. And, um, you know, like I was saying off the top, sometimes you need a hammer. I use 5Bs sometimes during the summer. If we're doing like big outdoor festivals or any, any kind of outdoor gig or something like that, then I'll probably end up taking a couple of pairs of 5B, just, just for the extra weight, the extra volume. Um, so I'll, I'll, I tend to use those for like the meat and potatoes stuff where I don't really have to get too technical or anything like that. If it's just all backbeat based music, and it's outside and um, big open space and I need more volume, I'll switch to a 5B, you know, just for, uh, just for the extra chunk. So for all you new drummers out there, you're um, shopping for a pair of sticks for the first time. I know it can be a little bit intimidating, you know what I mean? You're walking to a music store, standing in front of this gigantic wall of sticks and you have no clue what you're standing in front of. There's a million different sizes, you don't know what to do. Um, I would suggest for your average size, teenagers or whatever, start with a 5A. 5A is about the middle ground as far as diameter goes. If you're a tight, if you're a young whip, um, you got small hands, maybe start with a 7A first. You know, you don't want to, uh, and parents too, like if you're out there shopping for sticks for your kids and they're just little guys, there's no point in buying them these giant 2B sticks to start out with. Start out with a 7A, they're nice and small, they'll fit in their hands, and they can grow into it uh, later on. There are also three different common wood types for sticks. There's hickory, there's maple, and there's oak. Hickory is the most common. Most sticks are made out of hickory. Um, they seem to be the, uh, the most ideal stick or wood type anyway for sticks. Maple is cool. It's a lot lighter than hickory. The disadvantage to maple sticks is that they break a lot easier. So for hard hitters, you know, that keep chopping away at their drum kit, you're gonna go through maple sticks like crazy. So keep that in mind. Oak sticks are cool. They're the strongest of the three, but it's also the most brittle of the three. So um, hickory is cool, maple is cool because those types of wood will sort of absorb a little bit of the impact, you know, when you're hitting rims and stuff like that. With oak sticks, because it's so brittle, you know, they, they tend to sort of vibrate in your hands a little bit more and um, they don't take too well to shock and, and impact and stuff. So they can get a little bit used to, you know, when you're, when you're playing with them, but they're the strongest of the three. So if you can handle oak, go ahead and use it. So that's about it, man. Those are my stick tips for the day. A little peek into my stick bag. And, um, and yeah, this is what I use, man. Hopefully that helped you out. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next video.